Two months after John F. Kennedy requested airtime on each of the three television networks to speak to the nation about civil rights in the wake of Governor George Wallace's notorious stand at the schoolhouse door at the University of Alabama, a group of activists led by labor leader A. Philip Randolph led a march on Washington. The leaders of the 1963 march, including Randolph and Bayard Rustin, a top aide to Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., wanted to show support for a civil rights bill Kennedy had introduced about a week after his speech, and which he was attempting to shepherd through an unwilling Congress. Kennedy had said in his televised address, It ought to be possible for American consumers of any color to receive equal service in places of public accommodation such as hotels and restaurants and theaters and retail stores without being forced to resort to demonstrations in the street. And it ought to be possible for American citizens of any color to register and to vote in a free election without interference or fear of reprisal. And the march organizers hope to make that so. The date they chose for the rally coincided with the eighth anniversary of the lynching of Emmett Till in Mississippi. The official name for the march was the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Its purpose was not just to support Kennedy's legislation, but also to call out the economic inequality and social restrictions faced by black Americans in the South and in the North. It was also not Dr. King's march. He was one of several speakers scheduled to be on the dais that day. The speech Martin Luther King Jr. planned to deliver that day was not a gauzy recitation of his dream for America, a riff he had used many times and in many speeches and sermons before. It was an accusation. King's speech accused the country and its leaders of handing the Negro a bad check. On economic advancement, access to public spaces, education, and jobs. It was only when King went off script that he spoke of his dream and gave the world the lines, the world, the lines that have come to define him in history. After the march, King, Randolph, and the other leaders gathered at the White House. And Kennedy reportedly leaned into King and smiled, saying, I have a dream. Three months later, Kennedy was dead. The following July, the civil rights bill that 250,000 people marched for was passed. When we commemorate the March on Washington next weekend, it will be that dream and those spontaneous words from Dr. King that will be on the minds of most Americans. But it is the pragmatic goals of the march, jobs, economics and social justice, an end to police brutality and racial profiling, the ability of all Americans to vote without impediments and to have a dignified life and a job with health care, those are the things that the movements were king, where the, where the king and the movement were going all along, and we're still not there. When it comes to many members of American society, black, brown, white, and indeed today, the struggle continues.